and a quick timeout podcast. I'm Tony Miller and my co-host Randy Sherman will join us here in just a minute. As always, thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. If you're looking to spend less on team packs this season, but still get more, check out 323 Sports famous $55 team packs. Four pieces of apparel. That's a short sleeve tee, a long sleeve tee, shorts, and a hoodie, all for $55. To find out more about what they can do for your program, visit 323sports.com or you can contact a sales rep at sales at 323sports.com. They'll be sure to do it right for your basketball program. This is another one of our X's and O's. So if you're listening to this, you're going to miss out kind of on uh, some of the key features here that we're going to be showing. A lot of diagrams, some videos even sprinkled in. So if you are listening to it, I encourage you to go back and watch the full episode on the Radius Athletics YouTube page. Randy, we're uh, as the season approaches here, I know coaches are – probably gearing up and thinking a little bit more about their playbooks. And mm -hmm. uh, we've given some warnings as to not just add everything that uh, you see, but even in regards to like the, the things that we'll discuss today, kind of thought yeah. process behind it and uh, maybe why it appeals to a lot of different types of coaches, no matter what you're coaching. Yeah. I think, I think what we, what we agreed to talk about today are, are just some common, common, actions or combinations of thing uh, of actions that a lot of coaches run in in a traditional fashion and you and i sort of dug into our fast model libraries and found examples of the same actions common very common some of them really old school actions that that stem say from different alignments different uh, situations maybe half court sets sideline baseline but sort of taking some some um, popular and common uh, actions or combinations of actions and looking at them through different lenses, whether that be out of bounds, set, horns, five out, box, all kinds of th stuff. So th getting getting the same action from different shapes. Let's just call it that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it here. Okay. Go ahead and pull this up here. So the two that we're going to stick with today – uh, flex and Spain. I think every time I post yeah. either a flex or a Spain diagram on uh, Twitter, it usually goes nuts. And to your point, doesn't matter what you're coaching or what your favorite ATO alignment is or um, what you run, even you know five out, four out, whatever, you can use these and integrate these into your playbook. And I know a lot of us don't necessarily like design our own plays, but there, I even last year felt a little bit more because of the team that we have and being a little bit creative, I guess, like mm -hmm. we were able to take these basic actions and not really do a whole lot, but integrate them into how we played. And, uh, didn't matter, didn't matter who we were playing against usually created some open shots for us. So just some ideas. We'll start out with kind of the easiest one here, but, um, if you're a horns team, then a simple flex action, I have seen this several different ways. I went back mm -hmm. into my library and typed in horns and flex and got about four different versions of this. Yeah, same. Um, but this is about the simplest one. You could also shoot the one right down the middle. Um, you mm -hmm. can even use the two as somebody who goes cross screen, down screen, and then just kind of like flare the one out to replace two in the corner. Uh, but if your one's a good shooter, this is probably one you want to go with. But just a simple entry to the high post and then the cross screen. And then the down screen there in frame number two uh, for your shooter coming off of that. So, you know, again, feel feel free to creatively uh, move people around if you want the five, the one that's setting the down screen. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like sometimes when I post these, people look at this and like, no, that's wrong. I want my five doing this. I want my four. Like, you know, your personnel, you just make the adjustments. Them. Yeah, just switch <laughs> yeah. stuff around. <laughs> okay. okay. Just uh, the numbers. Yeah. Numbers. I tell people sometimes the numbers don't even really mean a whole lot. Uh, depending on how many layers you go and frames you go into it. But uh, this is almost like a setting up what we want to talk about. Yeah, next. this is introductory, right? Yeah, this is, this is, and that's good. That th This is, um, you know, one thing that, that I've seen um, pretty common here that's not diagrammed on this would be when one hits four, that piece of the horns, the other piece of the horns back screens for them. So we may get a, a, a scoring opportunity on a back screen lob or something like that to our one. If they don't um, hedge or show on that or switch effectively or something like that, that could be a back screen mm -hmm. from five for one and then right into the flex action. Yeah, yeah, that was good. So feel free to move people around. 
add in a back screen or something else sure. maybe yeah. along the way. But um, don't be married to I got to get a scoring look from this action because sometimes if you add in the back screen or whatever, you might get a scoring opportunities. And that's really what I like. I yeah. I like the plays that do have those back-to-back actions, but I want as many scoring opportunities in three, four seconds as possible. And this yeah. is one that's really basic, but that can get you probably three or four scoring looks depending on how the defense plays you. So horns flex yeah. probably are, uh, like we said, entry-level play that we want to talk about here. This one gets a little bit more involved, and I'll let you talk people through this one, Randy. Yeah, I pulled this one from my Princeton resources because I, I, I felt like, um, you know, there's a good segment of our audience who's maybe interested in that offense, but maybe is like, how could I get some something, um, a wrinkle or, a, or a, a, you know, a different – uh, action such as flex integrated with it. So what you see in the, the first frame is just a simple, um, uh, I would call this a way, the way, a wave entry where we don't make a guard to guard pass the player two in the, in the left slot just cuts down the lane line and over the top of five brushing them opens where we enter into the elbow. And, and then, um, and then we're into the, once we hit the elbow, we're into the flex action where, where two is going to, you know, cut over the top of five. Um, normally they would continue out to the corner and we would form a double side over there, but here we're going to get into flex action. So we've hit the elbow and we're, we're going to, uh, you know, cross screen down screen for, for player four, they're dropping to that right corner. Um, so, you know, if, if you, if you've been in your Princeton sequences, you know, and, and running through them in a game, then all of a sudden hit them with a, with a, with a flex action as a, as a, as a different um, sort of sequence of movements than re- your regular point over away under all that stuff. You, you, you might, you might find an, a scoring opportunity there or get an easy basket off the flex cutter or the screen to screen. We are not a Princeton team, but we are a four out one end team that mm-hmm. runs and tries to look in transition and does a lot the beginning of our possession, but you could very easily, I, I, we could do this where you four out one in, run to the other end of the floor, go through whatever actions you want, and then immediately go to this flex action and basically get the same kind of thing. Obviously it turns into Princeton, but um, so if you're a four out one in team, maybe even think about using yeah. something like this. Just playing uh, off the elbow right yep. there. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, this one's real good. I like this one. We'll come back with another point action for you. So Princeton offense coaches, don't go anywhere. This one, five out of all the rage. We'll talk about our five out masterclass that we're going to be doing here mm-hmm. at the end of the month, at the end of the uh, session. So don't leave. Make sure you stick around to that for that to find out more about that. But this is a flex action out of five out. Um, kind of uses your your five as a, as a screener, ball screener. So you might get a scoring opportunity out of that even before what's diagrammed here. Uh, but just to screen away. It comes back to the ball, and then you've got your cross screen. So in all these diagrams, I think most of us are wanting our two to be the one that's coming off of that final pin down screen. So just getting your two down into that cross screen with the five. So he cuts to the basket off of five down screen, and then you have the cross screen for your three, and then your one setting your down screen. Some coaches may not like this. I know guard to guard, they may feel like they just might switch that, but Um, we had a lot of guard to guard this year and we ended up with a lot of open looks. So you might be surprised at at how many you get. You've got to execute a lot of switching there when it all comes together in frame two. So, right. Yeah. And I like the curl pop to begin with. That's one of my favorite, just like, I don't know, you get that, you pass screen away, curl pop and, and sometimes just that can generate a shot or uh, uh, off that pop. And then you go right into the flex action. I'm digging that. Yeah, this one's cool. This one's cool. All right, and then we have a, a stack version of flex. Yeah, this this is um, this is a kind of a little different formation where we're we've got three players right in the middle of the court with a one, five, and two stacked. And and uh, um, I picked this up from watching some Miami Heat games and and really thought this would be good to include today because the formation is a little unique um, in that when we stack two and five, we could also just abandon this play and one drive it to his or her right or left because we've got 
deep corners. We're, we're compressing two players on the nail, so we've got space to either side. Um, but, yeah, we want the, the second of the players in the stack to, to, to sort of pop. You know, maybe we dribble offset and then pop opposite like that. Um, and, and then back screen for the passer when, when we hit the player popping off the nail. Um, again, that's, that's scoring opportunity number one. We might catch them on a back screen. They don't hedge or show or, or switch effectively there. Um, then, then it just flows right into flex where player five and frame two, after they set the back screen, would separate from that screen to get this, the catch, setting up sort of like the, 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 the trademark guard-to-guard pass in flex, and then we're right into the flex action with the piece in the right corner using the baseline um, flex uh, cross screen and then down screen. So we're, we're right into flex from this stack at the nail formation from uh, the Miami Heat. I love this one because of the space that you described. Like you start with that huge two, two and a half uh, person mm-hmm. gap there at the top that your one could very easily just drive it and score it. And they could start to drive it. And if they get cut off, then that initiates the two popping out. Mm-hmm. I could even see like, somebody a defender x2 like overplaying two and maybe you're getting like a back cut to the basket but if that doesn't happen then flowing right into flex yeah and then you got your cross screen and your down screen so uh yeah, we had a unique formation that's why i picked it yeah it's great we had a very good our best three-point shooter was our point guard last year and so this would have been like perfect for our one coming off of that to get a shot there on the mm-hmm. opposite wing so i like mm-hmm. this one a lot cool all right, and this is the last one in our flex series here, but out of okay. a blob. Um, I don't know that as many people think about integrating these types of actions, these popular actions, whether it's a stagger or a flex or even kind of like a pistol action out of your blob. But once you get the ball in, just simply a cross screen and then a down screen, and we got a ton of looks um, off of off of this anytime that we, we, we get a ton of looks off of this anytime we run it. So I like this one. Um, yeah, I feel like to run this. Sorry to interrupt. I feel like our our um, our faction of our audience that are high school coaches have probably seen this because yeah. you see a lot of flex offense. A lot of coaches want to sort of marry their their baseline out of bounds package with their basic offense, so they can just sort of like run run the baseline out of bounds. Maybe maybe get a, a quick scoring opportunity, but it then connects to their base offense and they just get, get it going, get to get the ball movement and the cutters and the screening going. Yeah. And when I watched, this was a Kansas play and they actually, if you're confused looking at frame two, they curled one. So he was Mm -hmm. open there or you could straight pop him out for a shot at the three point line, but they curled him out and then isolated. I can't remember if it was McCormick or who it was. It was somebody who really good, but gave him the ball and then kind of like isolated them with no help on the left side of the floor. And he was able to just drive it and kind of muscle his way to the basket and score. Yeah. Probably before your time, but the old, the old, um, the old Gary Williams, Maryland teams, Mm. they were a great flex team. And one of their trademarks was when they ran this flex action. So they run the cross screen. And the screener would then sort of duck in and seal. And they, instead of, you know, making the guard to guard pass, they would look back and throw it into that screener who's maybe man showed on the flex cutter. And then he would just duck in and like, he called it crab walk in on the guy and like step in front of him and throw back to the guy on on that isolation right there. That was the old Terrence Morris teams. And those are some really good teams. Great teams. Juan Dixon and those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. So we got right. some video of something sort of adjacent to this, sort of like an, a, a, a showing a team, the Arizona Wildcats. This is from several years ago, but you can see they start with a four low and then just get right into flex off of the off of the um, the four low alignment. So they just pop up like you diagram. They make the over the top pass and then cross screen, guard to guard down screen and they enter they enter to the post coming off the cross screen but yeah they just go right into flex off the one four flat yeah again a little bit different but still gets to the same thing and you can adjust based off your personnel as who you want getting the ball and where you want them to get it and a good example of sort of connecting your inbounds with your offense so you get right if you were a flex team you just run this and go right 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 to work yeah 
And that's what I really like about sets. I'd encourage coaches to think about like, how can we get this to connect as quickly and as swiftly and as seamlessly to the next thing if we don't mm -hmm. get the scoring opportunity out of mm -hmm. that quick hit or whatever it is. So that's a good point. All right, so that's flex, and we have some more if you are interested. I have some a lot more flex-type actions. If you're a yeah. uh, different type of team, feel free to reach out to, to Randy or I. But this is Spain, so moving on, this is another one of those that everybody uh, loves to, to find and pick out. And those that have maybe been watching some of the international ball that's been going on right now, you always see some Spain from pretty much everybody these days. But this first one here, again, out of your point series. Yeah, I think first let's let's sort of maybe for maybe our if there's somebody watching or listening who doesn't know what we mean by Spain, let's define that. Basically, what we're talking about is a ball screen and then a third player screening for the ball screener. So you get the same screen, the screener action is flex, but the action's at the ball, at the at the ball screen in, instead of all off the ball. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, this is a again, I, I went to my Princeton library and, and found, OK, how could we integrate a popular modern ish or, or, or com, you know, thing that's in vogue right now with a classic offense like Princeton and, and found this example. So so we go guard to guard um, in frame one, cut over the top of the post to free them up at the elbow, hit the player at the elbow in frame two and go point screen away. The key here is once we go screen away and we reject the screen, you see player three rejecting to the rim, the screener popping back, is I need player three to hang out under the rim. Don't go anywhere. Normally they would just, if they didn't get the ball and the reject, they would empty over here to the to the side and form, form a, a double side over here. But here I need them just to hang out under the rim because they're going to be our Spain screener, if you will. So hang out under the rim. We hit, we hit the pop man when we go reject pop. We hit the pop man. We chase that into a ball screen, and then the guy comes right up the gut and, and sets the back screen for, the, for, the, for, the, for player five to get the Spain action there in, in frame four. Yeah, I like that one a lot. That's great. Yeah, the key is just hang out under there. Let, hit the pop man. Let him, let, him, let him chase it out for the ball screen and then whack his man right in the back for the, back for the screen to screen. And everybody likes Spain because if you even if you don't get the to the five, what typically happens is X three drops down to help out, yeah. and then you create separation for three to pop out the three point line. It's a long closeout. Yeah, you get the throwback. Yeah, yeah, throwback for a three point attempt. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one I got this one from the Dallas Mavericks, uh, an ode to Randy and his yes, Texas sir. teams there. Yes, sir. But again, out of horns, and you've got the ball screen to start out with. And actually, no, this one starts out with a flare. So that's why I like this one even better is because you start out with the four or five flare and you can get that okay, if you've got so, a stretch yeah. four for a shot or you can move right into like a two-man game with the four and the two on that side of the floor. But then after the flare by four out to the wing, then five comes and sets a ball screen. And while that's happening, two is coming up to kind of get underneath. And so instead of hanging out underneath the basket, the long run from the corner mm -hmm. to the free throw line is what helps with the timing for this. So the timing is five sets the flare for four and two starts to move towards the free throw line, like loops up the lane there. Five twists and sets the ball screen. And now two gets into position at the free throw line and two back screens for five. And again, you've got that small to big. So X2 yeah. is probably going to drop to take away something at the rim or get dunked over. And then two separates out to the three-point line, and you have the throwback potentially that's not diagrammed there. Yeah, being an avid Mavericks watcher, I've seen this one with um, Luca to Dwight Powell for some for some dunks here. From um, so, and yeah, I like the I like the four cutting across too because that could also be um, you know something that that helps accentuate the ball screen by X five being a little late to the to the point of attack there. Yeah. Here's a video of it. It's not Dallas, but it is Phoenix running the same thing at the okay. end. They kind of get a burn. And that's one of the advantage with this is if a team, even if a team knows that this is coming, they will a lot of times put a lot of attention to the center of the floor mm -hmm. from those corner players to kind of give help. And that's where you can end up with like the burn action. So 
Um, yeah, but we'll see the first part of the se the Spain part of the sequence, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, so Bridges is going to cut over Aiton. Aiton so there's your flare. Screen. Yeah. To immediate ball screen and two Booker is coming up to set the back screen. Right up the gut, back screen. Yeah. And then he goes and scores. It's great. Yeah, same thing, flare. Yeah, this is good. They'll run it a few variations. I like that they get right to it too. It's really right. it's quick hitting. They get right to it. They get that convergence around in the Spain action right around right right at center of the court, stretch the court. Yeah. And here's what I was referring to at the beginning. You get the flare and everybody pays attention to Aiden and Booker in the middle of the floor. Yeah. And then you get the cut back door there. Nice. So. Yeah, that one's good. That way, I would yeah. encourage you to think about adding that when people add that, just simple. kind of like an ATO. Yes, yeah, super simple that you could have right out of a timeout or something like that, even if you're not a major horns team there. All right. And then here, a sideline is out of bounds play. Yeah. So I wanted to include just some, a little bit of variety. So um, to, to take a popular action like Spain and show how um, you could use it even in your, in your inbounds package. So, um, this this set that I, I, I as you see if you're watching comes from the Utah Jazz um, sideline out of bounds you know standard placement around the timeline or something like that um, I like staggered screens um, so here's here it starts with a stagger and and um, the player coming off the stagger is who we're going to enter into from out of bounds um, in this diagram it's player two. Again, we may just set good screens and the guy come right off of those for a shot or, or, but let's say they get the catch, but they're, you know, the, the maybe there was a switch or the guy kind of na navigated all the screens and he's sort of the defenders there on the catch. Well, what's next? The second screener is going to turn screen for player five. And as you see in frame one, I want our point guard to hang out under the rim again. Like I talked about in the other cities, hang out in the gut, hang out under the rim. And, and when the stagger comes, we get the catch, we turn and ball screen, just come up the gut and, and, and get into the Spain action with the ball screen. And then, then the inbounder too, after they hit the player coming off the stagger, go and sort of build that sort of stack or horns like formation by just taking that right corner. The key with these is that small to big screen that allows you to take advantage of either a small defender trying to help out or after it the shooter being able to give space and be somebody who can hit the shot, or as you saw in the video, somebody who can put it on the floor and drive an attacking close out there. Mm -hmm. And this, this does a great job. That's to your point about the stagger. Like we could have very easily this week pick staggers to use mm -hmm. and maybe we will in the future, but staggers, everybody is finding that two actions back to back. So in this case, pin down, pin down, or in a Spain action, back screen, pin down, pin down, ball screen, ball screen, <laughs> yeah. ball screen, back screen. Like that is tough to guard for anybody. And if you want something that's going to get you a scoring option really quickly, set two screens or in a row, or we may do next week, a Chicago action pistol type stuff where it's ball screen handoff or handoff ball screen. And you will, you will, you will force the defense to choose which one of these do we want to give up? Um, and you'll get some sort of scoring option out of it. So yeah. Yeah, it's good. Okay. And then this, I think this is the, do I have this one? Yep. This is the one. It's the last one. I included okay. this one because this is different from anything that we've done, but it um, pays tribute to old school four high. So if you're still Absolutely. a four high person, or uh, I know a lot of great stuff out of four high, then this is one that you can use with Spain and uh, not by accident by UCLA itself. So the old UCLA cut there, Mm -hmm. that immediately gets into the opportunity for you to get a back screen with the two that just passed the ball off. You could use this with your one as well. Uh, just come down the floor, set up in your four high, pass off to the wing there. Mm -hmm. And then you get the UCLA cut that immediately goes to a ball screen, to a back screen. Uh, if you Again, with the numbers, if you want to move it around so your four is not the one coming off the ball screen, maybe you feel like your four or five ball screen combination is not what you want it to be, then, then put a guard at that spot that's maybe sure. setting the ball up, uh, set, setting the ball screen up. So um, 
yeah, just threw this one in there to to use a different alignment that we hadn't used before. Yeah, so this is a good another good example of sort of taking a, a, a modern day concept that's popular now and and how to integrate it with a classic offense, the UCLA one four high. So mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Run this, this one, this one in particular is from the Lakers here, but okay. um, I've seen UCLA run some things connected to this as well. So cool. there's some, just some, again, some ideas that maybe some things that you can use with your, your particular alignment that you like to use the best one. And we can make these available to you. Um, if you need fast model, fast draws, uh, trades, that's fine. Sure. A lot of people will ask, by the way, what, what are you guys using? Uh, Randy and I both use fast draw to draw these up and the mm -hmm. advantage with fast draw, very easy to, to trade plays and send stuff. So we can send you entire playbooks or um, individual plays. So feel free to reach out to us about that. We do also want to tell you about something that I mentioned earlier with our Tuesday, September 27th masterclass. Randy, why don't you tell them what we're planning for that? We're going to talk about five out early offense, September 27th, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. That's a Tuesday night. Uh, we'd love to love for you to join us live. And and uh, it's a topic that I've done some, uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to call anything original in basketball, but like, mm -hmm. like kind of borrowed some different concepts, blended them together to create maybe a new package that, that's, that, um, I've, I've spoken about this before, but what I've sort of planned for this clinic that you and I are doing is to sort of explore one of the entries into the offense a little bit deeper um, to give some unique content that I've not um, put out there yet to, to um, patrons of the uh, clinic. So I, I'm, uh, yeah, again, September 27th, 7.30 PM. Uh, I've sent out an email about it. You can find it on, on, on my Twitter, you know, uh, link in the bio will take you to a place to register to to get involved into that clinic. Um, and I do think even if you register, you watch the clinic live, maybe you can see all or part of it and, and, and want to go back and watch it. You'll have access to that after the fact as well. So, yeah, five out early offense. Um, that's the topic. It's going to be fun. We'll leave you with and we'll give you. Uh, after that's over diagrams and handouts mm -hmm. so you'll have things that you can actually take with you and then like randy said you will have forever access to that to go back and watch the replay and uh, that is only available though if you sign up for the course and so we'll put that down in the description below this tweet and we'll also make sure that we regularly post that over the next two weeks i think that's it next okay. week we may come back with another x's and o's for you maybe similar to this show some popular plays i'm seeing already that some people enjoyed this so we may have to come back and, and do a little bit more of this next week so Excellent. appreciate everyone who joined us this week live and if you missed any part of the show come in at any point you want to go back and watch the full version just visit youtube radius athletics search hoops forum on youtube and you can find that easily or if you're just an audio person you can go back and listen to any part of it through a podcast platform just by simply searching hoops forum for randy sherman i'm tony miller we'll talk to you again next time on hoops forum Welcome into Hoops Forum, a production of Radius Athletics and a Quick Timeout Podcast. I'm Tony Miller, and I'm joined once again this week by my co-host, Randy Sherman. As always, thanks to our sponsors over at 323 Sports. If you are looking to spend less on team packs this season, but you still want to get more, check out 323 Sports' famous $55 team pack special. There are four pieces of apparel included in that pack, including a short sleeve tee, a long sleeve tee, shorts, and a hoodie all for just $55. To find out more about what 323 Sports can do for your program, visit 323sports.com, or you can contact a sales rep at sales at 323sports.com. They'll be sure to do it right for your basketball program. This is part two. We started last week with some playbook variations and focused in on a couple of the popular actions and what those things look like out of different alignments. Uh, Horns, Princeton. We're back again this week, but we're going to have two new actions that we'll get to in just a few seconds here. Tried to select some that are a little bit more more popular. Um, playbook suggestions, ideas, Randy, either particular to what we're looking at today or just in general. I know coaches are kind of gearing up in their minds for the upcoming season. I know you always have thoughts on playbooks, but it could yeah. be something connected to today or just in general. Yeah, I think 
to, to tie both thoughts together connected to today or just playbook in general is just kind of like this idea that as a team and as a program, we kind of have a base offense or a main, a main um, action that we use to sort of like that's identifiable to our offense. And then we grow variations from that. And as a playbook starting point, as far as installation, just start with the base and, and then trickle in outgrowth from there. One of the things that was great for us last year was when we had these actions and my players understood how these actions worked and the things that you could do off each of them, then we were able to actually kind of very quickly add in different alignments and it wasn't like a whole new foreign play for them. They were able to pick it up pretty quickly because they already knew what we were trying to accomplish within the actions themselves. We just started in different alignments and it kind of yeah. gave us an, an opportunity to expand our playbook without much effort. So good maybe would encourage coaches kind of think about that as we look in here. All right, let yeah. me go ahead and pull this up here. Uh, Randy, I disappear. So you're in charge okay. of anything that happens there on the right hand side. I'll there. take care of this. All right, let's start with stagger screens, uh, popular ones, but teaching points. I think this is where we kind of go next level where everybody knows what a stagger is, but the specific teaching points can separate whether or not, you actually get a scoring opportunity off of it. So, Randy, you want to take, take us through the teaching points of the stagger screen? I'll I'll do my best to speed this up, but I could go I could go long on this, um, but um, I won't. Um, let's start from the the player receiving the staggered screen. Player two there in the left uh, deep corner. The first thing I want them to do is set up that little line coming out from the number two is to set up to get to get in line with the screens and then and then run really tightly off of it. Um, for for the the main teaching point that um, I, I'm not so crazy about us making contact with the with the defender. I, I kind of assume that a decent defender is not going to let us do that anyway. But uh, I am. I am concerned with creating some sort of advantage or, or an opportunity for, for us um, off of the screen. Uh, one of the main teaching points you see highlighted in green, if you're watching the screen, is the second screener in the stagger. Our, our rule was don't, don't ever be right behind the first screener. If the, if, the, if the cutter's defender, as you see in frame one, goes under the screen, I want you inside and your positioning will make that that defender have to go sort of further under the action and then now maybe two can catch with an opportunity to shoot they can break off their cut which i don't have drawn here i have them drawn keep it coming into a straight cut but they could break off their cut and pop cut that toward the sideline when that defender goes that far under both screeners and and have a catch and shoot opportunity so so the second screener is almost like we call it the cleanup man like he he's the first guy sets the screen and you just kind of like clean it up even more so, like clean it up even more so. So like if the if the defender is going inside, get further inside to force him further under and vice versa in the second frame. If if the defender trails the cutter, I want you I want you to be a little bit outside the first screener if you're the second screener to force that corner a little bit wider that he has to corner around and and um and and we get a chance to curl into the paint off of the off of the second screen. So that that's the short version. Um, what you see, another teaching point, I would say, what you see in in both of these frames is what I would call a dribble stagger, where we didn't pass the ball, like meaning we didn't throw it from one to five to four, and then one and five go and screen away for three. We just brought the ball up the court, and two players just ran into a stagger off the dribble. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So there wasn't the ball reversal and the two passers staggering away. It's just like maybe two trailing players go set the the staggered screen for the for the guy in the left corner. We didn't reverse the ball. So I'm still the ball the the ball handler brings it up. I have maybe I don't know where I've been, but I've never what you have diagrammed on the screen. I have never paid attention to or or heard. So I learned something today. I don't know if anybody awesome. else has gotten anything out of this, but. Uh, great teaching point and yeah, kind of those you. micro skills, micro details. And then what this looks like an example of could be. Yeah. So I picked up th this, you know, as part of our work with fast model, every March, we kind of, you know, 
get get geared up and watching certain teams in the tournament and, and kind of picking teams that maybe throughout the year we watched that did some cool stuff that you can highlight at the tournament. And for me, that team, one of those teams this year was the Miami Hurricanes. I really liked a lot of the stuff they did. Um, and so I did a film study on their offense and it had a lot of staggers in it. And one, and as you see is that sort of open side or that dribble stagger where the ball didn't reverse the bra, the ball was brought up the court and two and five go and stagger down for three. Um, what you see is um, in the first frame would be if they if they trail, you can see I drew five just a little bit outside two. So so um, so he could clean up that curl cut and 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 maybe we get a chance in the first frame to curl into the lane for a for a score. Um, another teaching point on the stagger, I should have mentioned this on the last frame is I want the second player in the stagger to be unlike the cutter. Does that make sense? Meaning that's a five. That's our big. The cutters are three, one of our guards. That that makes it, you know, the, the defense might be less apt to switch the the guy in that in that case. They might they might not. And then you you get an, an advantage off the screen. That's the sidebar. Sorry. Um, yeah. So if they don't trail and we just don't curl them for a layup, we'll just keep running, as you see in frame two. And then the second screener screen for the first screener who might curl it and go lay it up. Mm-hmm. And then if they don't, like so you see there in the, in, in the bottom frames you just pulled up, we've set the stagger, second screener's wider, they curl, they didn't get the pass, they keep running, we screen for the screener, but we throw it to them, right? And then now we're going to go uh, touch action or a pitch back where where – we throw one throws to two, two hands it right back, like like just uh, I call it a TikTok TikTok action, just ball goes TikTok, right? Um, so and we and we pitch back, next frame, two options there, one two could could not pitch it back and keep it, or if they do pitch it back to one five is in position to turn and step up ball screen, in kind of a weird angle there with a with a with a ball screen. Um, so yeah, that's a that's stagger screen the screener pitch back keep or step up all in one one deal and and luckily we have video because uh, they might do a better job explaining it than i did but you see the stagger catch and i think this one's going to be a keep yeah he keeps it he comes off the stagger and it looks like he might hand back to the passer but he doesn't there's a stagger there he curls we screen the screener and get the curl off the second screen against duke there Stagger, curl, stagger, and then the second screener gets a shot opportunity off the screen, or the first screener off the set screen, the screener, curl. There's the touch back into the, or the, the, the hand back into the step up. Stagger, curl, hand back, step up. That's great. Same thing with step up there off the off the, the hand back action. Yeah, those are great. Those yeah. Are great. Yeah. Yeah, I, good stuff. I really like their stuff. I thought it was I thought it was fun to watch and, and it just gets a lot of players involved and it really gets a lot of defenders involved and 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 uh yeah, just good stuff. And they had a nice run in the tournament, Miami did this year. Yeah. And actually that last part is something we're gonna get to in a second with the zoom stuff where you have the the TikTok, which is nothing more than like a handoff that leads immediately yeah. to a ball screen. But we'll come yeah, back okay. to that in just a few moments. So stick around for that. Let's go ahead and go on. I mean, that was fantastic, but let's go ahead and go on anyways yeah, yeah. to the next part. Um, this is one that I every time I post this, you post another version of this. I mean, this is one that everybody loves, and it is that idea of the stagger that then allows you to continue on and this is could have gone actually a third frame so those that are watching yeah. we've talked about the different alignments this one is out of a horns and you immediately get the four five and it has all the elements that randy was just talking about with finishing the stagger with a five screening for a two but if you don't get something out of that it can continue on to another stagger for probably your second best shooter there mm-hmm. for the three and then what I don't have drawn is you could actually continue on and have another stagger for the one as yeah. they kind of circle all the way through again and have another opportunity score. So, and everybody knows, I think we didn't mention this, but everybody I think knows 
it oftentimes results in like a slip to the front of the rim to mm-hmm. score for one of those screeners as they're really concerned with, you know, best shooter coming off second best shooter. And to the point that we've made a lot of like those consecutive actions, not only are you getting consecutive pin downs, but you're also getting stagger, stagger, stagger. And that's a lot of opportunities for the defense to mess up and maybe mm-hmm. get you something either in the paint or, or three point opportunity. And we have video of this one as well. Yeah. If you like staggers, this is the, this is the set for you. Cause man, there it's, it's chock full of them. Right. So yeah, there's the horns and you see there's the first stagger. We, Second stagger, <laughs> it's like a revolving door of yeah. staggered screens. Um, that that um, I think this is a Temple Owls that I'd, I'd seen running this. So, the ball screen, the stagger away, the stagger, and they pass to that one. The baseline stagger, yeah. There's the there, and then we just keep going, man. And those <laughs> those two screeners just sort of travel in, travel in a in a in a in a in a couple, and and as a couple, and keep staggering for people. Yeah, it's it's. And, and theoretically, I mean, you could do that infinitely. You could just sure. keep going <laughs> stagger after keep stagger going. after stagger. So um, maybe somebody wants to pick that up as like their entire offense. It's just stagger yeah. after stagger after stagger. I included this one. Just saw this one doing a film breakdown for the WNBA finals. And nice. we typically think of staggers leading to a shooter coming off. Mm-hmm. But something that's been popularized in the last several years is when you have that guard that goes and sets a ball or excuse me, sets a screen for your screener to eliminate help when the screener comes out to set a ball screen. So whether that's a hedge or whatever, and what the Las Vegas aces actually did was they went and set a stagger screen for the screener. So they eliminated, hopefully eliminated any kind of help with two people. And that didn't just end it though. It kind of set them up for the action that we talked about last week with the Spain. So after the five sets, the ball screen now two sets of back screen for five. Mm-hmm. And while that's happening, there was actually that kind of pin in cross green type thing happening mm-hmm. for the second shooter. And so you had the one coming off that potentially could have scored. You have the two and the five with the Spain action. So something over the top or throwing it back, a toss back for the shooter. Or you have that kind of that flex screen, that whatever. Coming out to the off corner. Of that, yeah. So, uh, you know, a, a great ATO if you're trying to have three or four scoring opportunities in just one set so yeah, i thought that cool. was i thought that was just kind of uh cool from the standpoint of not you don't necessarily have to use these actions to get a scoring opportunity but to actually generate the next action which is a scoring opportunity so yeah i, I call this arriving alone mm-hmm. i want it i want the ball screener to arrive alone at the ball screen so i i screen for them to sort of like you know their x5 would be you know, trying to navigate this double screen, the staggered screen, and 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 five arrives alone at the ball screen. That that's good. I like it. Yeah. And then and then like with the combination with the Spain action. Yeah. Yeah. And same idea here, but you know, not from necessarily, baseline out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah. For just kind of inverting the courts and not necessarily again getting something for a, a three point shot or a shooter coming off of you know pin downs coming towards half court, yeah. but like actually going towards the hoop. And, uh, you know, you could loop them through this and, you know, like the Miami actions that you had, like three sets now a screen for four as they're coming through. And so a lot of things that you could do, but just wanted to show staggers from different places on the floor rather than just, you know, the one dribbling in between the, mm-hmm. the lines up there at the top and then some sort of pin down on the wings. Uh, yeah. Get creative. This is, this is almost like a staggered back screen kind of <laughs> like type thing. So, yeah. 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 Cool ideas. Okay. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. From baseline. Yeah. For, from, uh, from, from some different stagger actions. Let's go ahead and move on to the second one that we want to talk about variations for zoom. And this first one with Princeton and, and this could go on for days, but this is just one that you selected Randy and, and uh, kind of talk them through this and maybe why you picked this one. Yeah. So zoom being, being down screen followed by a handoff. So we're screening, for the recipient of the handoff as, as, as they, they're going to receive an off ball screen, a down screen, and then come off of that. And someone's bringing in the basketball off of handoff. So, um, yeah, so I like to kind of, you know, zoom and things like that get sort of these, these, uh, you know, it's seemed, seemed as new or modern or whatever, but I always like to bring, I'm, 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 I'll be 50 next month. So I'm bringing 
bringing like the point that yeah every there's really nothing new right like you see so this is from princeton offense this is as old as it gets nearly and and uh and so it's point uh we see in frame one we use a a a wave entry where we don't throw it guard to guard we just the, the the player four just cuts over the top of the post freeing up player five at the el elbow we hit hit the elbow at the point in which we 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 pass to five at the elbow that passer has three options they could cut away or screen i'm sorry they could screen away or cut middle or they could cut over and that's what i have drawn here they cut over and go and down screen for that player that single player player three in the corner and five just turns after their catch and just follows them um, and to, to hand it off for the uh, for, for player three coming off the, the pin down. So I, I call it enhancing the dribble handoff. Like instead of just me dribbling and handing it to you, there's a third player involved. I'm dribbling it. You're screening for that player. And, and we've enhanced the dribble handoff a little bit. Um, and then you could then if say, um, let's say you just didn't like the handoff to player three, like they screened and maybe their, their defender just sort of dirtied that handoff somehow. And, and, and the screener pops, I could, I could just keep my dribble and hand it to them. So it's like, we could keep what I call keep and go next. I, I don't like that handoff. I'm going to keep my, I'm going to keep my dribble and now I'm not going to do it. I'll go to the next guy and hand it to them. I think the similarities between the stagger and the, and these zoom actions are you're not married to like, if this first thing doesn't work, like we're in trouble uh, with the stagger. Like you can set that second pin down that gets you something else with this one. Yeah. They come the first handoffs, not there that frame three, one can come back and now receive a handoff or you could yeah. even keep it and turn around and Barkley and then play out of that sure. as well. So um, yeah, that and my, my Princeton coaches will know that, you know, one of the teaching points of, Princeton to your point is there's there's no beginning and no end meaning like what you said there's there's we don't just run an action and then okay that didn't work now what there's always by design something next I call it the show must go on right like okay we we want to do this action but it didn't materialize but the show must go on so what what can we do next you know yeah it's a great way to think about it and describe it as well yeah uh this one a slob kind of the same idea but yeah this is sidelines oh, out of bounds oops sorry yeah um yeah this is a a, a miami heat and eric spolstra and you know you see lots of teams run this but they, this is this is his favorite man mm -hmm. and and uh, i've got video of it but it starts with a ucla cut and maybe we get you know just set a good screen somehow we score off that 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 ucla cut um and, and we enter it right into to player three cutting off the ucla cut but uh player five that I want that to be, I want, again, kind of like the stagger. We want, we want the deliverer of the handoff and the recipient of it to be unlike. So we lessen the likelihood of a switch. And, and um, so I'm using my five to back screen for three and then separate from that screen. And that's probably who we're going to end up inbounding to. They turn and put it on the floor. Four is ready. As soon as it's kind of inbound and he's looking and, he sees it's inbound and he's going to go down screen for the handoff recipient, which is player two. So, so um, we will, we're enhancing the dribble handoff by first screening for the recipient just from sideline out of bounds this time. And I'm, I don't want to assume this, this is similar to the stagger. You want to make sure, how did you describe it when you have the five setting for the guard? Whether they're inside or outside? No, just the principle of making, you know, having that bigger player that's now yeah, they're unlike they're yeah. unlike they're not like it would if it's just if it's just point guard ha handing it off to two that's probably going to just be switched and not materialize any advantage right right and and in today's game a lot of people are switching one through five so it still might but at least it's less likely like they might they might like eh, I don't know about that like you know we we might not switch x five onto player two right you know. Yeah, so here you can see the UCLA cut. Bam Adebayo separates PJ Tucker for Duncan Robinson right into the handoff. And I've got several examples. That one, the, the UCLA cut, is kind of off screen, but yeah. yeah that's good. I like that one. Yeah, this is a good shot here. UCLA separate, 
screen dribble handoff for Tyler Hero, and and then and then they've got they've got him uh, moving into an advantage. Yeah, yeah that's good. All right, uh, I included this one. I like this one because a lot of times we see that zoom action going towards the midline, right. and that's typically where most space the most space is. So it's it's you know reasonable for for you to do that. But you can also design it for it to end up resulting in a player going towards the outside of the floor, and in this case, uh, Sacramento kind of using that empty side. Mm -hmm. So as the ball is now entered. You have the two coming off the pin down and where you get the zoom action is there in frame number two as two hands the ball back off and it's immediately followed by a ball screen and you have your pair on the other side spaced so yeah. that now you have an open lane. You could have somebody going down the middle of the lane or but one now can basically operate in that entire half of the court. Yeah, I mean, you could also you don't have to roll the five to the front of the rim. You could set like a crack back screen and the one dribble to score or turn around mm -hmm. and Barkley and throw it back out to two or uh, split cut. We've, we talked about split yeah. cut actions yeah. and watch a, a prior episode of that. So uh, a lot of things, but just the point of it doesn't always have to go towards the middle of the floor. You can push it towards the outside and, and generate some additional actions. Once you go towards the outside of the floor. Yeah. I really like this with the empty corner concept and, and it's still, it's still handoff, right? Then we're screening. Um, yeah, I like it. That's good. All right. So, I mean, we were talking before this. Uh, we've got hundreds of things in our, our library that yeah, could, yeah. could have been included in this and could have gone over for a long time. So if you're looking for some more, you say, well, we run five out. We run four out, one in. We want... Uh, there were some that I had from Boston and Brad Stevens mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. they did some of their 41 series with some of these in it. So uh, feel free to contact us. The Randy talked several times about the Princeton, and that leads me into the next thing. Those of you that have listened to us have heard over the last couple of weeks uh, the master class that we're going to be doing on yeah. Tuesday, September 20. I had the date, 7th? Yes, 27th. Okay, Tuesday, September 27th. For those that maybe haven't heard, Randy, can you kind of give them a preview as to what they're going to get from that? Yeah, we're going to um, to do a five-out early offense clinic um, on the night of September 27th, 7.30 p.m. Central, 8.30 Eastern. Um, what we're really going to talk about is like transitioning to a five-out shape and then sort of like our our first first actions um that we that we run like right off the break it, assuming the defense was back and we didn't just outrun them for a layup and 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 kind of how to do that and how to kind of um quarterback that without say a bunch of direction from the sideline and and just sort of reacting to our our teammates and what happens first in the possession and letting that sort of trigger and cue the, the, the first gambit, if you will, of us sort of creating an, a, an advantage or creating a shot opportunity. I'm really looking forward to that. Last time we did it, uh, Randy did a great job, and then we had a great Q&A session at the end. Mm -hmm. So if you're any kind of five out, whether that's your main thing or you like to just run some special stuff out of that, I encourage you to sign up for that. We've had quite a few people sign up for it already. So there's a link on our social media accounts. Randy and I both have been posting it. Um, I even gave this week in a blog that I wrote that's linked on my Twitter account a couple five out actions that you can run. And then at the bottom of that, there's a sign up there. So you can find that several different places. It's going to be an exciting time. We're going to have some resources for you afterwards. I've gotten the question a lot of times once it's over, like if I buy it, but maybe I can't show up. Can I watch it afterwards? Yes, we'll have everything available for you. So even if you don't get a chance to attend it live. You can get all the resources and the video access to that forever. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that you have that. So look for that. Um, that'll be, like I said, it'll be a great time. We had a great time talking. This is one of those. I know a lot of people aren't going to as many clinics nowadays and that sort of thing. And I know it's primarily because we feel like we can get stuff online. And this is one of those where you can get it online. And it's going to give you like a real clinic type feel. I know we're not on a court, but Randy yeah. does a great job incorporating video and diagrams. And so um, I, I just strongly encourage you to uh, think about attending that. So, 
Uh, yeah. Appreciate everybody who followed us and listened to us this week. If you missed any part of the live show, you can go back and watch that on the Radius Athletics YouTube page. Just go to YouTube and search Hoops Forum, or you can go to any podcast platform if you're more inclined to listen and search Hoops Forum or a quick timeout, and you will find the full audio version of the show there. For Randy Sherman, I'm Tony Miller. We'll talk to you again next time on Hoops Forum.